Hello and welcome to Pop Flash. I'm Jack Westerman, he's Matt Sadikis Trivet, and this is everything you need to know about Counter Strike this week. Our first topic this week is the Gfinity Summer Masters, which took place at the weekend here in London, England. The prize pool was $80,000, and to kick things off, let's take a look at the group stage results. Uh, so as we can see here, in Group A, Ninjas in Pyjamas and Team Dignitas advanced from their group with uh, scores of 2-0 and 2-1 respectively in their matches. Over in Group B, we have Envy and Mouseports advancing uh, again, 2-0 and 2-1 for those guys. Um, Overall, pretty good tournament, uh, Sadikis. Let me ask you my first question, which is uh, related to Group B. So, we saw arguably a bit of an upset. Virtus Pro and Cloud9 slipped into those bottom two spots, and Mouse Sports finished in second place. They had a great tournament overall. Is that a bit of an upset for you, the fact that Virtus Pro in particular, but also Cloud9, finished beneath Mouse Sports in that group? Um, I would have said going into it that Cloud9's best chance to take a series would have get it, been against Mouse Sports. Uh, but for Virtus Pro to finish ahead of Cloud9, that's not unsurprising. The bigger surprise is that Mouse Sports beat Virtus Pro in two straight series. Mm. The new roster that Mouse Sports has is really aggressive, uh, and Chris J and Dennis work well together, but they're inconsistent. And the fact that they're really aggressive usually means defensive teams can catch them off guard. So the fact that Virtus Pro didn't capitalize even on the second opportunity was a bit surprising to me. And if we take a look at Group A as well, so there's another potential upset over there um, in that Dignitas beat Titan in two straight games. Um, which was the bigger surprise? The fact that Dignitas was able to finish in second place ahead of Titan and, I guess, SK, or the fact that Mouse Sports was able to finish ahead of the two teams in Group B? Uh, I would say the bigger surprise was Mouse Sports. I mean, Virtus Pro on LAN is usually really well proven. Uh, in fact, more consistent on LAN than online. They've taken a bit of a break from gameplay as and lands as much as they were, say, in March and April, but to, to go down into groups in this in this particular land is very surprising. Whereas Dignitas have been a team that have been actually one of the more surprising and more improved teams so far of 2015. They are also just a team that struggles from inconsistency. The same can be said, though, for Titan, uh, and uh, they have been kind of one-dimensional for a long time, relying on Kenny S, uh, and obviously Kenny, as of late, has has struggled a little bit. So. Um, to see Titan slip here, it just it, it's proof to me that A, Kenny needs to find his form again, um, maybe reinvent himself, and that they need more than just one contributor. Apex needs to step up, RPK needs to step up. And uh, so for them to go out, um, it's perhaps a, a little bit of a surprise in some ways, but not as surprising as Virtus Pro. Right. Well, if we move on now and take a look at the semi final uh, matchups here at Gfinity. So. Uh, Pretty straightforward bracket, as you might expect, and in the grand final we saw Envy uh, defeat Nip three maps to nil, absolutely sweeping them in the grand final. Um, overall, it feels like it was kind of a mixed tournament for Ninja in Pajamas, right? I mean, Alu played quite well, he led the tournament in AWP in orp kills, AWPs per round, uh, but Freiburg went minus 21 in kill death differential, and Exist went minus 24. So this is kind of a continuation of Nip's slump, right? This is yet another tournament that they failed to win with Alu in the team. Uh, and people talk about Ninjas in Pajamas needing to get out of this rut. Overall, was this a good tournament for Ninjas in Pajamas or a bad one? Uh, the group stages looked pretty solid. Um, they were they won convincingly in most of their matches. They were um, quite comfortable in most cases. But in the crop of, of teams that were at this tournament, that's not surprising. Uh, the bigger issue is that, again, Envy in the finals has their number. They're, they have a lot of trouble beating the French team. One of the only lands I could think of in recent history they did so was CCS mm. at the end of April. Yeah. Uh, and to go down 3-0 here in a best of five, not even pick up a single map is... Is, is a very um, worrying tale for uh, for NIP. Who I mean, it's basically eternally second place. They're the only team out of the top six teams this year to win an, a major LAN. They won Asus ROG in Finland, but the, the you know the cream of team that were there was not nearly as high caliber as, as everyone else who's won this year. So they definitely still have some issues. Alu did have some some great performances, but it seems whenever he's on, you know, Freiburg, like you said. Um, with the negative scoreline is off and, and they just, again, they need to find everyone's game all at once because it's too little of, of one at a time for them. For our second story this week, we're going to have a quick look around some of the other leagues that are being played in the world right now, namely Sivo and RGN. So, kicking things off uh, with Sivo, first of all, Sadikist, we're going to have a look at the North American Top 4. So, 
SIVOLAN is due to take place at the end of July in Ohio. The top four teams from each region, both North America and EU, will be attending the LAN. And as we can see here in the North American top four, Cloud9 have uh, topped the league. 10 wins, 2 ties, 0 losses. Luminosity come in at 6-6-0. Six, six, Liquid are number 3 with a score of 8-1-3. And, and Tempo Storm are in there at the bottom at 5-5-2. Five, five, so, this is a slightly different top 4 to the teams that have made it into ESEA's Pro League. Um, Keyed Stars aren't there, CLG aren't there, but instead Sevo is going to see Liquid and Tempo. Is this a better representation of North American talent? Um, I don't think so, actually. Um, I, I, I think it's a different representation. That, that goes without saying, but not having Keyed Stars there uh, is one of the best execution-based teams and, and arguably one of our best chances against European teams. Does kind of weaken the field a little bit. Uh, it's encouraging to see a team like Tempo Storm, who's done a lot of work this year to revitalize their game, uh, make it through to the finals. But the big one for me is Liquid coming in. Potentially that has more promise than someone like CLG at ESCA. Um, simply because of their experience in the last two Gfinity events, not including the most recent. Um, but they were able to pick up maps uh, off of some of the European teams. They had experience at Face It, and I think they, in specific, have played some of the best Counter-Strike in North America over the last month and a half, specifically. Okay. Well, it's... Uh... Moses and I were talking about this last week actually the fact that CLG making it to the Pro League finals ahead of Liquid kind of felt like it was the wrong way around certainly in recent months right yeah I, I think that CLG although they've got lots of skilled individual players they still have a lot of team problems um, leadership issues just being on the same page and, and execution problems so I think Liquid yeah I think they are more deserving of that spot at ESCA Pro League but again they had a slow start and um, the league is so tight that, that a slow start really haunts them late Okay, well, let's leave North America there for the time being and have a look at the European top four, the uh, teams that will be attending Sevo Land from Europe. Uh, so, again, actually a bit of a pattern here. We've seen Nip coming in at the top of this league, so uh, 10, 1, and 0. Virtus Pro are in second place, Mouse Sports in third, and Na'Vi rounding out the top four with a score of 5, 3, and 3. A um, bit of a provocative question here, Sadikis, but is this just another easy land for European teams? Are they going to come over and take the top four spots from the North Americans? Uh, I don't know that they should take the top four spots. On paper, you would look at it and expect them to, but there's a chance that Mouse Sports, again, potentially could get knocked off by someone like Cloud9. Um, Luminosity is actually a dark horse in that they've got Pith, who has a lot of experience in Europe, yep. and they, they aren't someone that these teams know much about, so they have a chance to maybe potentially sneak an upset in there. Uh, but overall, I think Nip's going to come in extremely hungry. They aren't going to be at Pro League. Uh, they enjoy coming to North America, and they're hungry for a win. And VP... Again, uncharacteristic, the result at Gfinity. They should be a solid team to watch for. Navi's been on point. So I, I expect they should take at least the top three spots. Uh, the fourth one on paper looks like it's theirs, but we, we'll find out. We will find out indeed. That's the Sevo Land Finals taking place at the end of July, uh, and we'll undoubtedly cover it a little bit more here on Pop Flash in the coming weeks. The second league I want to talk about in story number two here today is the RGN Pro League. Um, so... Over in North America, we're just starting to progress through the bracket. Uh, as we can see in the graphic here, so Luminosity uh, have entered bracket play as the number one seed. They've already beaten Keyed Stars 2-1 in the first round, uh, and there are plenty of other good, good teams in this bracket, right? We've got Liquid, we've got Tempo, SKDC, uh, and a host of other guys who are going to be playing. So, given that there's no Cloud9 in this bracket, there's no Keyed Stars, which teams do you see in the finals of this bracket, Sadikist? Uh, I would say in the finals, I would expect it to be LG and Liquid. Again, just based on the same reasons that we've talked about. CLG does still exist in the bracket. Um, it's interesting that, that Keed went down that quickly, but the fact that LG beat them bodes well for them. And again, CLG's issues with, with execution and, and just orchestration as a team, I, I think, aren't going to pay off this time. Liquid's not coming into this slow. They're red hot right now, and I think they're going to take advantage. I mean, they've already lost the opportunity at ESCA. There's two other opportunities for them at SIVO in this, this event, and, and they're going to take advantage of these. They've got a big sponsorship obligation that they've got to fulfill. Last but not least this week, I've got some quick-fire questions for you, Sadikis. So, uh, as quick as you can, give me your thoughts on the following news stories. Number one this week, ESEA uh, has announced the groups for their Pro League. Yeah, I think the groups um, look solid again for the European teams. Uh, Cloud9 is going to have a hard time making it out, but Keith Stars have, I think, the best chance, oddly enough, of potentially getting an upset in at the LAN. Uh, but again, I think the four European teams are in really good shape. 
Uh, the only one that's been shaky so far in group stages as of late is Envy, so they'll, they'll bring their A game, I'm sure. It's a big land with big prize money, and these guys will come in focused. Uh, Glorins has left Tempo Storm, and Stan has confirmed that changes are incoming for the team. Yeah, presumably Rush and Roka, who left, or seemingly have left Elevate, which is a bit of a surprise. They're a stable roster. Uh, does bring in some flair. Uh, Roka is a really solid player with, with multiple weapons, and Rush is a very good CT side. But for Glorens, he never really found his feet this year. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is uh, probably a good change for Tempo Storm, I think. And last topic for you this week, Zedekist. Uh, Skyton has left Team Kingwin. This is a bit unsurprising. They get off to a slow start. They claim, according to Michael Lilly, that they have the best sponsorship in esports, the best contracts in esports, and they were they were struggling with their TV side. Since they've gotten rid of him, they've been playing really well um, with Dennis in the roster. Hopefully, they'll keep him on board. But uh, yeah, this is the I think only positive change for Kingwin. That's it for this week. I'm Jack Westerman, joined by Matthew Sadikis Trivet. And potentially we'll be back next week with a bald version of me in my place for another edition of Pop Flash. <laughs>